Hi everyone, today I'm at the beautiful University of Sydney and I'm here with Siobhan Tobin. Hi. And today we're going to be talking about this exam, which is the International Physics Olympiad. This is the exam from 2016 and I've invited Siobhan along because she is quite the expert in these particular exams. <laughs> oh, I don't know if you could say that, Toby. <laughs> so, this is a basically Olympics for physics students. Yeah, so it's the Olympics for high school students around the world uh, who are interested and passionate about science. Yeah, and so you've done this before, I haven't, and you were also a team leader in 2016. So we're going to have a little bit of a look through this paper, see what it's all about. Um, it does say that it's made of two parts. There's an experimental and a theoretical part. It says that they're five hours each. Is that 10 hours in a row or how does that work? <laughs> no, <laughs> thank goodness. Um, it's five hours on one day, which is the experiment, and then the students have a day off and then they come back on the day after that for the theory paper, which is another five hours. Okay. But each five hour exam is, yeah, five hours without stopping. So. That sounds quite intense. So let's have a little look at what's in here. All right, so here is the exam. We'll just flick through and have a look at some of the questions. This is a bit of the preamble. So this is the first part of the exam, or the first exam, which is experimental. Um, so it looks like they're just showing us pictures of everything we've got available to use. Um, so I imagine we're doing this in a room where we've actually got all these available to us as well. Yeah, all the equipment for the experiments would be on your desk, so. Okay, so yep, more preamble, an introduction to resistance and resistivity. Um, so the experimental exam is divided into two parts and, and this part is about the um, sheet resistance of different two-dimensional shapes and different materials. So the materials you're given uh, a silicon wafer and some graphite paper. Alright, it seems quite nice of them to give us so much preamble <laughs> yeah. uh, to read through. At least we can get an idea of what's happening. And here's where it looks like the question actually starts for the experimental part. So you're being introduced to this kind of um, four-point probe measurement where you've got uh, something that basically you can find out different values of um, voltage and current through a kind of a circuit that you're making on your silicon wafer or your graphite paper. Right. This is a little bit more theory, I think, just explaining some concepts about different kinds of shapes and how the geometry of your material can affect resistance and resistivity. So it looks like they sort of lead us through each step of the experiment that they want us to do. Um, do you think that if you didn't quite get a part of the experiment earlier that you can do the later parts? Is that how it works? Yes, yeah, certainly uh, moving, moving through different parts of the experiment even if you're unsure of earlier parts is a great technique. Part of the Physics Olympiad is that you have to um, analyse your results within the time frame as well, so it's not like you can take your results away and have a think about them, you've got to plot them in the exam and, and draw some conclusions at the same time. So we've got like questions that say explicitly to, to plot the data and the measurements you've taken. Is that all done by hand, plotting the data? Yeah, yeah. it is, so you have to be pretty accurate with your graph paper. All right, and this is the last page for this particular experiment. Um, and I'm sort of impressed about how many different steps have actually been involved in this. I can sort of see why it takes so long. Now this is the second experiment and he looks quite interesting. Um, so this is something to do with jumping beads and they're using like poppy seeds on a material to measure phase transitions, which sounds like a very abstract way to do this. Mm. So this question is pretty interesting, like poppy seeds, what's that got to do with physics? Uh, so they had this neat little setup with um, a loudspeaker that bounces up and down and then you put your seeds into a container on top of that loudspeaker and the container is split into two and your task is basically to watch how the poppy seeds jump from one side of the container to the other while the loudspeaker is going up and down. And so that models the phase transition, which, yeah, that's pretty impressive. Um, so here you've got this little diagram which kind of um, conceptualises the physics. 
So these arrows are pointing the same way. That's representing the phase where all the poppy seeds just stay on one side of the container. And then if you turn your loudspeaker up enough, then all the poppy seeds start jumping around between the two sides of the container. And that, that's a phase transition. So. And you're looking for that critical point where it's about 50-50? Yeah. yeah, where all of a sudden um, you reach this kind of steady state where you've got the same number of poppy seeds in each side because they're just jumping back and forth all the time. And this idea is kind of linked to a, a temperature in the explanation here. So it is pretty abstract. Okay, um, so we'll just briefly flick through the rest of this poppy seed experiment and we'll get on to the theoretical side. Okay. So we've now arrived at the theory half of the exam. We've got some nice little constants here. So thank you for providing those, Mr. Exam. Um, and it looks like we're starting off with a problem about, about mechanics. Yeah, in this question, it's split into two parts, but both parts are mechanics questions, um, testing your knowledge of rotational dynamics and things like moments of inertia and, and stuff that's in the Physics Olympiad syllabus. Yeah, so they've given us like this setup here and then on the next page um, they modify it a bit and then ask us basically every question I can sort of imagine <laughs> about rotational mechanics in a way. Every, yeah. Everything you need to know about that they're basically asking you here. Yeah, so in this part here you're really looking at things like balancing torques and balancing forces. Um, you've got this disc that's got a heavier disc somewhere inside it and the point of the question is to figure out where the heavier disc is. So you roll your kind of compound disc down a slope and see what position it stops and then here you use it as a kind of pendulum and and then there are a whole bunch of questions about um, the, the periods of oscillation and moments of inertia and centres of mass <laughs> and all this good, good mechanics yeah. stuff. Yep. And then this second part, it's about uh, rotating space station and how that mimics like gravity basically so how they do all these sort of experiments with a spring to see how a spring that's on this rotating space station how that does it act any differently from a spring that you're holding and bouncing up and down on earth and that kind of thing so it's like artificial gravity. To what extent do you think all these mechanics questions here rely on formulas and memorising formulas? Do you think that will get you part of the way? They've certainly given you a few formulas throughout the exam but knowing how to use them and um, employ techniques such as dimensional analysis is, is also important because you're required to sort of work with the formulas to create your own equations. Okay, this is ending the mechanics section, it looks like, and we're getting into sort of electricity. Now this question here was quite interesting. Um, this is voltage versus current, but it doesn't look anything like the usual voltage versus current plots that we would see. At school you'll often see a, a current voltage plot that might be a straight line and that's your kind of standard resistor but here it's not just a straight line it's a kind of zigzag thing so it's quite a non-linear um, electronic device the fact it has this zigzag so in this question you're asked to investigate different properties of these non-linear electric devices. Yeah that impresses me quite a lot because if I try to remember back to high school and the age I was when this paper would be relevant, like I was only doing really straight Ohm's law type stuff. I would just have straight lines here and I feel like I was never really learning about non-Ohmic things until like university and my university courses. So yeah, it impresses me to know this so early. But even for a university student, this is kind of a puzzling situation mm. because it's not just a nice function. You've got points here where um, the device can jump between different states and you can even kind of set up a cycle where it can move around this curve including jumps. So it's quite an unusual thing and certainly I hadn't seen something like it until this exam. Mm. can actually use Ohm's law in parts of this question um, to obtain values for resistances depending on the state the device is in. So it all helps. <laughs> 
All right, and then very relevant for this exam, which was held in Zurich in Switzerland, we have a question all about the Large Hadron Collider. So it looks like this part of the question is a bit of an intro, and then it's all going to be kind of about particle physics um, and some more modern physics, I guess, to the previous questions. And this question also uses a lot of concepts from relativity. Because, oh yeah, I just saw gamma here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because of course the protons are moving really, really fast around the Large Hadron Collider. Yeah, so again, that I think was something I didn't see until maybe first year and onwards at uni was actually relativistic um, considerations. And in the very last part of this question, you're looking at how different kinds of particles um, how they move between detectors and how you can use that information to identify which particles you've got, like the charge and the mass of different particles. That's more of the particle identification question. And that looks like it's actually our last page as yeah. well, with just a little question over the end there. So that was, I, I think, a bit of a beast of an exam. Yeah, it's a pretty mega exam, <laughs> without so a doubt. We'll keep in mind that that is two exams, it's the experimental and the theoretical, but yeah, it would really take a lot of actually practice just to be able to work for five hours at a time. Do you get like a break or anything in those five hours or um, to eat? They <laughs> often give you a little snack box little and, snack. <laughs> and a water bottle. And of course you can go to the toilet and things. <laughs> All right, so this exam, if you guys are curious, I've just downloaded from the uh, uh, website, which I'll link down in the description. Uh, so you don't need to pause the video and squint to see the figures. You can have a look at the full PDF um, and there's a few other exams on there as well. Me and Siobhan have filmed another video talking more in detail about the Olympiad in terms of what it is and some tips and tricks if you're studying for it. So check that video out after this one and thanks for watching.